Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about some of the applications for curved mirrors, that is, concave mirrors and convex mirrors, in opposition to the plane mirrors, which are just flat and pretty boring to be honest. One of the applications, as we'll see a bit later, turns out to be in the rear view mirrors of cars. Now a spherical mirror is a mirror that's part of, or a complete, sphere, like we can see in this picture over here. In a concave spherical mirror, we're looking at the inside of the sphere. So it's concave, but if we were to spread it all the way around, it would form a sphere. In a convex sphere, like in this example over here, the outside of the sphere is shiny. We just take a chunk of it. That's a convex mirror. Now all spherical mirrors have something called a focus. That focus is the point where the center of the sphere would be if the whole sphere was still there. So in both concave and convex spherical mirrors, the focus plays an important part. We can see that the pail of water is sitting closer to the focus of the mirror. Uh, the reflected image of a concave mirror is formed at the focus of the mirror. If we're looking at convex mirror, that is one that bulges outward, then the virtual image, that is the place where the image seems to be coming from, is once again the focus of the mirror. So whether we have a concave or a convex mirror, they will both form an image of the reflected object at the focus. If we put an object at the focus, then the light will bounce, the light from that light source will bounce outward and be reflected. It turns out because uh, in a concave mirror, the focus is the smallest reflected image that we can get. If we put something at the focus, then any reflection we get from it will be larger. You can see that if we have a concave mirror, and we have a small object at the focus, then light from it will be bounced outwards. And so the projected image will appear to be larger. It means that if we want to magnify an image, we can put it at the focus of a concave mirror. We can't do this in a convex mirror, because in a convex mirror, if we're looking from the right, to put something at the focus would mean putting it behind the mirror, and then we wouldn't be able to see it at all. Concave mirrors are very useful for, for example, makeup mirrors or dentist mirrors. If a dentist needs to see a patient's teeth in detail, he can hold up a concave mirror so that the teeth are at the focus of the concave mirror. Then the reflection in the mirror will appear larger and easier to see. Now, concave spherical mirrors don't reflect light to a single point, which is unfortunate. It means that if we want to make a camera using spherical mirrors, then we get uh, the sort of effect that you can see on the left over here. This is called spherical aberration. You can see that it forms little circles of light instead of little points of light. A parabolic mirror is a way of getting rid of this problem. For a parabolic mirror, all parallel rays of light uh, that enter the mirror are all reflected to the same focus, which is nice because it means that instead of getting little circles like this, we get little points instead, and we can get a clearer picture. Parabolic mirrors are very good if we're looking at objects that are very, very far away. An application of this is, of course, in telescopes or binoculars. So in these cases, we use parabolic mirrors in order to focus light from a long distance away into a very small point without any blurring. This type of mirror, if we run it in reverse, so to speak, we can put a light source at the focus and have the light from that focus spread out and then form parallel lines. If we draw a parabolic mirror, we can see that if light coming in will be reflected to a focus, then light coming out from the focus will be reflected into parallel lines. So why would it be useful to create lots of parallel lines of light? Well, I'll give you an example. In a torch, or in the headlight on a car. In these cases, we need to project light forward a long distance, so we want it to be going as parallel as we can get it. This means that we put a light bulb at the focus of a parabolic mirror, and the parabolic mirror will focus the light into straight lines. Convex mirrors are also important. 
We've been talking only about concave mirrors so far, but convex mirrors also make up a big part of our everyday life. The reason for this is because they provide a larger field of view than our normal eyes or a plane mirror can provide. So they're used in, for example, car mirrors, which we can see over here. It means that if you look into the mirror, you see a wider field of view than if it, the mirror were completely flat. And this is great if you need to be aware of your surroundings, as you do when you're driving. Uh, and of course, there's another use for it. They can be put at street corners in order to see down two different streets at the same time. They provide such a large field of view that they can reflect down both streets at once. If we're at a blind corner, uh, where, when we're in a car, for example, and it needs to go through a very, very tight corner, we won't be able to see the road that we're turning into unless we have one of these mirrors to help us. Now, if we make a mirror very strangely shaped, then we can produce very strange reflections, as we can see in this photograph over here. So these can often be found at amusement parks. They're known as carnival mirrors. So these will be a mix of concave bits of a mirror and convex bits of a mirror. They'll sort of join up to make a weird, distorted, strange reflection.